Hey y'all, today I want to go over yesterday's art walk video and talk about some things I would have done differently. Perhaps for the next art walk video, because I want there to be more than one. That one clearly did better than all of my other videos. Um, the last video that got as many views as that was, I want to say, number six or number nine. Um, I, I like I literally just looked it up but I can't remember um, so thank you for watching and sharing that video and liking the video it's got four likes so thank you um, I, I really appreciate the positive feedback on on like on productions like that when I go out and like do stuff um, clearly y'all like that and I like doing it so uh, I I'd like to go do that again. Um, the only issue being the next time that happens is in October. So at the end of the other video, I put out the call for like, if you're a creative person in Los Angeles and want to be featured in a similar way, email me, morgan at murderloft.com. And uh, I'll try and make my way out to your place and interview you, show off your art, what you do, etc., cetera, uh, and make another cool video out of it. Um, clearly that's something that people uh, want to see and I'm more than happy to do that um, I'd like to thank the artists that I featured yesterday uh, Dan Dowding Blair Maffris, Nico Renali Cinda Valley Polly Carroll Karina King and Lenny Jones um, I wish that I would have thought to actually talk to and interview everyone. Um, I only got to interview Nico. Cinda did a lot of talking about her work while I was there. I was just kind of too nervous to ask if I could get her on camera. So I need to work on that for sure. Um, but I still like, I listened to her talk a lot about her art and just kind of where she was as a person. Um, and like she makes, great art about her life um and as you saw yesterday like it's amazing art it's oil paintings that are so realistic it's it's unbelievable it's like it's like looking into another world um her art is amazing uh dan's art with the tvs um as you saw he has a very good reason to have all those tvs and it's because recycling them like they don't really there's not really an economical, environmental way to get rid of TVs anymore because there is, he said there's like four to 10 pounds of lead in your average CRT tube, which I honestly had no idea. I think a lot of people don't know how much lead is in those devices. Um, but when you think about it, it makes sense because there's electrons flowing through a tube and it needs to make sure that there's no outside interference. And so all of that lead is to shield it. It's very similar to like, I think when you go get an x-ray and you wear that like that big heavy jacket I'm pretty sure there's like lead panels or something in there that keeps all the stuff from getting to you um, let's see who else those uh, the glassware okay so that's two people producing glass and it's produced on location right there at in their studio um, I wish I had talked to them more, but there's cobalt glass, dichroic glass, printed glass in all of those pieces. Um, and again, like, I wish I had talked to her. Uh, Polly didn't seem to be there, but Karina was there. That's the person who I talked to and saw. Um, I didn't get her on camera. I didn't get anyone else on camera. Like, Lenny probably would have been very interesting. I looked him up after the show, and um, he does sound design, 3D sound. Uh, experiences in addition to the electroluminescent piping uh, art that he does which I think is really cool looking um, especially like the uh, the banner prints or not prints but just the the scrolls the hanging scrolls um, I think those are very very cool looking very very like kind of uh, Blade Runner-esque future kind of feeling stuff and it's just I'm happy somebody's making stuff like that. Um, the one person who really surprised me was Blair Maffris. He does 
as you saw, it was it's art that's like, it's kind of, it's a little difficult to describe, but the way I heard him talking about it was that it's a kind of mix of glues and sand to make these sandy surfaces. And then he's composing within those materials. Um, and like different consistencies, things like that. Um, and yes, I know all of this could have been voiceover over the video, but I kind of wanted the art to speak for itself. Um, because in a lot of cases, you show up to these places and you don't necessarily have the artist sitting there talking to you about the work. Um, so I kind of felt like I wanted to duplicate that experience in a way and uh, just not have me talking over the work. So Blair is, or at least was, I think, a professor um, and like he's done commencement speeches at colleges. Uh, he's an art professor. And what was surprising to me is that there was like not much promotion. He doesn't have a website. His only web presence, as far as I can tell, is the website that he gets from the brewery Art Walk, which is a fairly good presentation of his art. But I feel like there's deeper meanings within his art that could be presented better. And like you could see. At the end of the Art Walk video, I had everyone's social media stuff, and for Blair's I just said Google him, really, because that's the only way to find out more information about him. Um, he doesn't seem to have any kind of social media presence. I can't tag him on Facebook. He doesn't exist on Instagram, which I completely understand to a certain extent. Some people just don't do that stuff, and if you're not living off of your art, you don't have to constantly promote it if you're just there making stuff. and wanting to talk to people about it like he was very educational like <laughs> it's weird looking back on it of course it makes sense that he was very educational because he's an art professor but he was talking to in in the video you see he's talking to somebody and like using his hands and talking about like kind of spreading the sand around and different consistencies and stuff um and it was just like it was very cool seeing him kind of explain the work um And then Nico's work, Nico's mainly a musician and producer. Her work with her drum heads and the, uh, and the prince, the drum prince, um, as she said, we're in kind of uh, celebration or honor of the album that she'd put out, which is, um, hang on. Hold on, I have to look it up. You know, you actually, you have first-hand knowledge that I have a terrible memory. Hang on. Hang on is the name of the, e of the, the EP that just came out. La Cucala, I listened to it a lot today. I really like it. Um, it's kind of like, she sounds kind of Karen O-esque in her vocals. Um, the music itself is kind of more raw um, and like some of her tracks are like really just have like some good cutting bass and really powerful drums. She's a drummer, so that makes sense. And she's presumably singing, not in the recording singing while drumming, but in performance would be singing while drumming, I think. I, it just, that makes the most sense to me. I am totally just pulling as much out of my head about this as I can to try and put together what what could make sense to people describing this, uh, describing this to other people. So I want to say, again, thank you to all of you who allowed me to capture your art. Um, that was really, really awesome. And I would, again, I, I would love to do it again. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all today's vlog is. Um, I didn't have much else to talk about. Today wasn't ultra eventful. Um, just kind of still getting stuff together, doing life stuff. Nothing, nothing too big or anything like that. Um, and yeah, that, like that's that's pretty much today's vlog. So. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.
Oh my god, it's like, is it all stuck together from being wet? <laughs> ah! Apple Watch owners out there, I have a question. Does your hair get stuck in the bottom of the watch right here? Because I swear, I'm gonna go bald from all the hair I'm losing getting this thing stuck in my hair. In fact, here. No more problem. It literally takes me forever to get my hair right, I swear.